Tonight, we are investigating a stretch of roadway in Mandarin. We're talking about Losco Road, and we told you about one of the most recent crashes that happened there. A child hit by a car. On your sides, Kaylee Tracy tonight has been digging into documents related to crashes along Losco Road. Kaylee? Yeah, Heather, and tonight the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office says that there have been nearly 70 calls for service. I requested these records for crashes along this stretch of road. That's just since the start of the year. Neighbors here told me they thought there was at least one per month. They were right. There have been at least a few, some in, uh, in several in some of the months, and that has caught the city's attention. As a Mandarin resident, I frequent those routes often. So that I, I do appreciate that people do fly down that road pretty quickly. Jacksonville City Council member Michael Boylan says after the fourth crash on Hood Road South along Losco Road this year, he talked to the city's traffic engineering department about the road a few weeks ago. Traffic and, and concerns with respect to speeding on streets like Losco, on Hood, on Marbon, I can click them all off as easily as anyone else can. And, you know, that really is an ongoing challenge for our community. After a child was hit by a car Friday on Losco, Boylan spoke with the city's chief of traffic engineering. He told me they had been looking at Losco Road for some time and doing some analysis of both, not only their reports, but also now what JSO has on, on file in terms of accidents along there. And also working with now with DCPS and understanding the bus routes for that neighborhood. According to calls for service from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, there have been nearly 70 calls for crashes along Losco since the start of the year. The most at the intersection of Losco and Old St. Augustine Road. So it's, you know, like a raceway out there. Jennifer Flanagan lives along Losco. She put in a request with the city for a stoplight at the intersection the boy was hit in May. According to the city, her request is under review and they're looking at options like crosswalks and stop lights for Losco Road. Losco is, is on the list of one of those where we, we pay a, a careful attention to it. Boylan says it usually takes at least six months to do traffic and pedestrian studies before a decision is made, but that could vary. We're working to learn more about that boy's condition. We have talked to neighbors who responded when that accident did happen. They told us that the boy was breathing and he was talking. They said it did look like, however, he took a lot of that car, the hit to his head. And as we learn more information about that and possible lights and crosswalks on this road, we'll be sure to keep you updated for now. Reporting live, Kaylee Tracy, First Coast News on your side. Kaylee, thank you so much. An arrest has now been made in a day or a deadly hit and run crash investigation that dates back to June. 39-year-old Homer Wiggins Jr. was arrested by police in Panama City, Florida. Wiggins was wanted for leaving the scene of the accident that left one person dead in Crescent City. He's going to be extradited back to Putnam County to face charges. How about some new technology? That